I am here today to talk to you about an author that I think is very important in an entire movement in a certain genre of books. And the author's name is Terry Windling, and this is Urban Fantasy. She was one of the first authors to really make it a thing. So I'd like to take you back in time to the 1980s, and I am wearing some new romantic garb that was all the rage in Europe, in England, and it crossed the pond and became a part of the fashion statement of the United States at that time. There was also punk going on, which was very mean, and New Romantic was a bit more gentle. It grew out of the glam movement of the 1970s. It was a little more posh than glam. Glam was fun and frills and glitter all the time. That was what that was. But uh, one of the other things that, that happened at that time that New Romantic grew out of was an economic downturn that happened all across the United States and all across Europe and it sounds a little familiar things were like that then and a lot of the fashion and sensibility came from the people on the street there was a lot a lot of street fashion that eventually fashion designers started taking notice because photography uh, was huge. Everyone was taking photographs of everybody and it uh, reached higher levels of fashion and then became more uh, available to the everyday people living in the middle of no nowhere, New York State, like myself. Um, so that's a lot. That, uh, Terry Windling was a young in woman in her 20s living in New York City at this time. And she loves folk tales and fairy tales. That was her big thing in fantasy. She was uh, living in New York City in the 80s. And what was that like? Well, parts of New York City and the boroughs at that time were really economically disadvantaged. There had been a project made by the big wigs of New York City to get a throughway built between New York City and Connecticut bypassing all of the neighborhoods with small businesses in the boroughs. And once that happened, those small businesses disappeared and poverty took over. Uh, there were a lot of renters of buildings who just left them empty because there was no one to rent them and it was like a tax write-up, it was a mess. And so the city started demolishing buildings but building nothing in its place. And so this is what it looked like. Absolutely derelict, empty, abandoned buildings. And people who were living there uh, were worried about gentrification and losing their homes. And squatting in the United States and in Europe became quite a big thing. There was even a handmade squatter's handbook on how to get into a building to convert it into something that you could live in. This is the environment that was going on at the time. Uh, the, the style was also the likes of Cindy Lauper. Prince at that time was completely new romantic with all his frills. Debbie Harry of Blondie kind of uh, straddled the punk and the new wave, but she was radical. And Annie Lennox, who was a gender bender, that's what they called that sort of thing then. They called it uh, gender bending, which was absolutely the big thing. Androgyny, wearing and uh, dressing as the other gender, was really big back then as well. So the other aspect of that time, it was pre-internet. And if you wanted to be a part of a scene, you had to go there and be a part of it. And that's a big part of this whole genre I'm going to tell you about. She, Terry Windling, had worked for a company called Magic Quest Fantasy, and they asked her to create a line of books for teenagers with Ace Tempo books. And that got her a name in the publishing world as being the person. 
So New American Library, they invited Terry Windling. And just imagine if someone came up to you and said, we want to make a shared world fantasy world and we want you to do it. And at that time in the early 80s, it was still fantasy was very influenced by Lord of the Rings. And you all know Lord of the Rings is all about uh, the rolling hills uh, and mountains and natural places and stuff like that. But Terry didn't want that. She wanted a gritty urban environment that touched upon a bit of what life was really like for teenagers. Now the whole idea of a shared world wasn't entirely new. Apparently there was a man named Robert Lynn Asprin who had a Thieves World series that was more like, a, if I'm not mistaken, I could be, more like a cowboy, you know, things, not um, a fantasy. But that's like, what is that? That is, a shared world is like a television show where a couple of people come up with a basic structure of the setting and the characters with their personalities are a little bit like, but then they hire all these different writers to come and participate. It's almost like comic books too. You have your creator, but then over the years, different authors come in. There are certain rules that you have to follow in order to continue that. And so this is what Terry Windling wanted to create too, but in this urban fantasy setting with authors that she knew um, and so who were those authors? Charles DeLint. He wrote a book called Moonheart, and you can get that in the library system. War for the Oaks by Emma Bull. You can get that through the library system. This one was really great, and it absolutely had a character based off of 1980s prints. So definitely check that one out. I love that. And then there was another one called Wheatsy Bat by Francesca Leah Block. And that also is available. Now these were but, um, sort of more urban and they were influencing Terry and she wanted them to participate in this project. How lucky is she that she's being paid to get her writer friends together to create an entire world for themselves. Okay, so what is Border Town? Border Town is very similar to The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany, which was written in 1924. And that, if you've ever seen the movie mm, Stardust, uh, that has a similar theme where there's an actual wall that if you cross the wall, you will go from our world into the fairy realm. And in this world. It takes place, I feel like it takes place in the United States, but I guess it could be elsewhere, but it is true. The wall between the worlds, between the fairy realm and our world, suddenly appeared. It had been invisible forever, but all of a sudden it was there, and it showed up right next to a city. And the people in the city freaked, and they didn't know what to do about it, uh, because all of a sudden, Elves are coming over and there's all sorts of weird magical things happening in the city that they can't control and they don't understand and that's frightening to them. So people start to leave the city after trying to control it, to force it to do what they wanted to do, nothing worked and eventually the city becomes abandoned. So there's this derelict abandoned building very much like the boroughs in New York City that runaways and outcasts and people who don't have a home can go to, to build the world that they wanna build. And so this is true for people in our world, which is the world, and fairies from the realm. Both sides have outcasts and people don't fit in for whatever reason, and they want to get out. And there are rules and regulations about this whole thing. It's a fascinating world in this 80s style because it is very international and multicultural and diverse with all sorts of um, cultures that get along and clash, different economic 
uh, layers. So many things that were happening at the time in the 80s just came out in these stories in, in Border Town.